If you were able to effectively multitask with your practice, let's say uh, if you could use the same amount of time you'd normally spend practicing one thing, to instead practice two things, three things, or how about four, or five, how much faster do you think you'd be able to progress? And how does this idea relate to what people call talent? For starters, we have to define talent in a tangible, actionable way. One definition we could come up with is that talent is the attribute of having developed a strong enough passion for something that the mastery of it becomes a priority over comfort and ego. We could also say that in its more commonly used and superstitious definition, it's the most convenient excuse for not achieving a goal. In the world of guitar, it could have been such a useful excuse that the vast majority of guitarists are able to weasel out of putting in the required work to achieve their desired level of skill. That may seem a little odd, but the word to pay attention to there is desire. If you desire the comfort of relaxation, watching TV, or playing video games more than you desire that level of skill, then you know where you'll be spending most of your free time. You've probably heard something like that before, but you've also seen enough to realize that some guitarists just progress faster than others. That's just a true statement. I'll say it again. Some guitarists progress faster than others, often a lot faster. So why is that? And could you become one of those guitarists? Or do you have to be born that way? Let's do a little thought experiment that without all the information, will seem to disprove the definition I gave at the beginning of the video. Let's imagine that we have 10 people starting out on the guitar at the same time. They're all the same age. They're all equally driven to master the guitar. And they're all working on the same techniques and practicing the same amount of time each day. Intuitively, we can understand that after one year, they would not all be playing at the same level. In fact, there wouldn't even be a single pair from that group of 10 that progressed at the exact same rate. You could even rank them from one to 10 based on how much they progressed in a year. One guitarist would have progressed the most quickly and one would have progressed the most slowly. If we compared the guitarist in first place to the one in 10th place, the difference in progress would be significant. Now, imagine if we ran the same experiment with 100 guitarists and compared the first place with the 100th place. As I said, this seems to disprove the definition that I gave at the start of this video, but it doesn't. Instead, it creates the perfect scenario for the most overlooked and most important factors of progress to play out. Those factors are information, efficiency, and creativity. If you simply approach a technique or exercise with no information about what it is, how it works, or how it relates to other things that you've learned, or even the general layout of the fretboard, you'll not only be failing to make critical distinctions that tie different concepts and techniques together, but you'll end up wasting unimaginable amounts of time on redundancies. Thinking of chords and scales based on their key or root note, instead of as abstractions that can be applied to any key or root note, is the most obvious example of this critical and common mistake. Think of how often the term path is used to describe the process of mastering a skill. This is an ancient metaphor, and it can be as harmful as it is useful. It implies that there's only one correct path to get from a beginner level to the master level, which, when actually articulated, is obviously untrue. In our case, we can say with certainty that no two guitarists have ever achieved mastery of the instrument by following the exact same path. In fact, as an area like guitar is developed and built upon over time, to use another imperfect metaphor, more and more shortcuts are found. To put it more exactly, more and more efficient methods of achieving a particular result are found. Here's a hint that will lead us directly into the next part. There will always be more efficient methods to find or create.
Using creativity to optimize your approach to practice is one of the most powerful tools for increasing rate of progress on the guitar. If you just practice passively based on the instructions from a course, guitar instructor, or just you know while working through varied techniques one at a time, you're wasting the bulk of your potential. Everyone can be creative in this way. Creativity is part of what makes us human. It's not something reserved for a select few. If you don't think of yourself as a creative person, just think of it as problem solving instead. The problem is just how can you learn something more efficiently? The solution you find will be a new approach that suits yourself and the specific circumstances. You're now using creativity to increase your rate of progress on the guitar. It doesn't matter what you call it, just so long as you take advantage of it. These three areas are more than enough to account for the differences in progress that lead to what people call talent. To illustrate, let's expand upon our hypothetical a little further. First of all, let's say that those 10 guitarists were all working on mastering three scales, A minor, B minor, and E minor scales. A number of those 10 guitarists could work on memorizing three separate patterns based on their positions on the fretboard without taking a moment to look at the big picture, and because they're missing key information, from their perspective, that would appear to be the best approach. So let's rephrase their task and say instead that they're working on mastering the minor scale in A, B, and E. The faster progressing guitarists would practice the minor scale as a single movable pattern. You'd think this would make their progress three times faster, but it's actually a lot faster than that. In this case, all they need to memorize is one minor scale pattern. And then, where to find the A, B, and E notes on the string where the root note is played. Now that's a pretty simple example. So let's give our hypothetical guitarists a little more to work on and see how they approach it. This time, let's say they need to refine their sweep picking, string skipping, rolling bar technique, and the rhythmic transition between quarter notes and eighth triplets. That sounds like quite a lot to have to isolate and perfect, and the average guitarist would be pretty overwhelmed by that list alone. Anyone could get stuck working for several weeks, or even more, on any one item of that list. Our slower progressing guitarists would do something right along those lines. Perhaps they'd spend a few weeks refining their sweep picking, then spend a couple weeks uh, on the string skipping. By the time they get to the rhythm, they've neglected the sweep picking for so long, they've essentially got to start all over again. Our fastest progressing guitarists, or the ones who will earn the title of talented, well, they're gonna take a more informed, creative, and efficient approach. Let's say our top ranked guitarist finds a couple sweepable arpeggios in the same position that use rolling bar. They string them together and create a sequence that ensures string skipping in each iteration, and each iteration uses a rhythm that includes a quarter note and three eighth triplets. Here's an example of what that might look like. If they use the metronome method of starting extremely slowly so as to be able to play the pattern perfectly, repeat the pattern until they achieve five perfect repetitions in a row, and then increase the beats per minute by two and repeat. They'll have refined everything on the list with just 10 or so minutes a day. It just becomes a warm up that serves the purpose of refining and then maintaining each of those elements. Now they've freed up their remaining practice time to work on other optimized approaches where they can practice what they already know, work through courses, practice improvisation, learn new techniques, learn new songs, and so forth. In the talent debate, the most overlooked variable is quality of practice. Let's look at that optimized multitasking pattern a little more closely. The vehicle for practicing these techniques are the combination of two arpeggios, a C arpeggio and an F arpeggio. Notice how they're both in fifth position and are optimally placed to be easy to transition between them. Our hypothetical top guitarist could have used arpeggios more spread apart if they wanted to practice a specific position transition or fingering, but those weren't on the list. That's because this isn't simply about multitasking. 
this approach is all about a clear and intentional optimization of practice time. It must be catered to specific goals to be effective, otherwise it'll become inefficient. It also needs to be designed to match the level of the player. More difficult isn't necessarily better. Here's that optimized sequence again. This time I'll slow it down so you can get a better idea of what's happening. If you could get more out of 10 minutes of practice a day than many get from spending hours a day, how much faster would you progress? And would you qualify as being talented then? If you don't already know the answer, as someone who might be privy to just a little more information on the subject than you are, allow me to confidently tell you, the answer is yes. If you'd like to get the tab for the optimized pattern, the sequence that we used as a demonstration, Follow the link in the description and join my mailing list. I'll send you the tab and offer more tips along the lines of this video each week. You can also get started on my free course, Secrets of a Sleep Arpeggio, if you haven't already done so. And that would be through the same method. Just follow the links for one or both and start putting this approach to work right away. The sooner you get started on it, the sooner you'll be able to internalize the concept and the sooner you'll start to hear people diminish your hard work and individuality by slapping you with the label of talented. But don't worry, we know the truth. This beautiful one-off custom guitar is made by Solipsist Guitars. You'll see me playing this a little bit more in some future videos. This is an absolutely fantastic guitar. I highly recommend checking out Solipsist Guitars. I'll put a link in the description. This one here is called the Cheetah, and uh, there's a name for the reason. reason for the name.